This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Which is a better design, forks or chopsticks? If you're from a Western culture, you probably think that forks are easier to use, but I would argue that's mostly because you're so used to them. Putting a spiky metal instrument in your mouth is pretty weird when you start thinking about it. Even if we do assume that forks are in fact easier to use, that's not the only factor that determines whether people end up adopting a design or not. If it was, we'd all just eat with our hands. Cultural norms and conventions are incredibly important to us, and it heavily informs the types of tools we prefer and the way we go through our lives. If you wanna test this out for yourself, go walk into a crowded elevator and face the opposite direction of everyone else and watch how uncomfortable people get. We're going to compare forks and chopsticks, and I'll even tell you which utensil I believe is the best design, but it's impossible to talk about utensils without discussing the history and the culture that surrounds them. Eating isn't just a biological process, it's a lens through which we look at society. Civilizations are defined as much by their religious and cultural philosophies as they are by their food. Italy is known for its beautiful cathedrals and Renaissance paintings, but it's probably even more well known for its pasta. Forks are just as central to Italian culture as the Sistine Chapel. Forks were introduced to the dining table by the Italians to twirl pasta in the 1300s. Before that, they'd eat pasta with a single wooden spike. The Italians realized that having multiple spikes was easier to twirl the pasta around on, and by the 1600s, in the 1600s, forks were pretty common with the merchant class in Italy. The use of forks gradually spread throughout Europe, but it was considered a very strange little tool, often compared to a devil's pitchfork. Today, Italy and the rest of Europe's culture is defined by this little utensil, but it wasn't always that way. The earliest recorded accounts of forks considered them an abomination. St. Peter Damien said that it was sinful to prefer eating with a fork instead of your God-given hands. By the 18th century, forks were considered more civilized than eating with your hands. This isn't really true, of course. I mean, there are plenty of sophisticated civilizations that eat with their hands today. But in the West, the fork was a symbol of civilized culture. It even got to a point in the 19th century where people were trying to eat everything with a fork, even soup. Mr. Pitt eats his Snickers bars with a knife and fork. I am eating my dessert. How do you eat it? With your hands? <laughs> but obviously that was taking things way too far and that never really caught on. But why are you using a knife and a fork? One thing that you will commonly hear about, regardless of the utensil, is the importance of refinement and civility. The fork is considered a very polite tool because it's far less violent than a knife, but a bit more versatile and a little bit less babyish than a spoon. Chopsticks take that even further. Rather than slashing your food with a knife and stabbing it with a fork, you gently pick up the food with the chopsticks and place it in your mouth. The ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius said that knives belong in the slaughterhouse, not at the dining table. So, are chopsticks the better utensil? It's a little bit too early to say, but before we continue, I wanna to talk to you about NordVPN. All right, don't skip, don't skip the, don't skip, don't skip. We're talking a lot about cultural context in this video, and one nearly universal value that almost all of us share is privacy. NordVPN allows you to browse the internet freely. When you use NordVPN, you don't have to worry about companies logging your personal data and then selling it to the highest bidder. You don't have to worry about your data getting stolen on public Wi-Fi networks. NordVPN in particular has threat protection, which can help block malicious websites and ads. You can try NordVPN risk-free for 30 days. NordVPN is fast, super easy to use, and you literally just click one button to turn it on, and I highly recommend it. If I were to compare NordVPN to another product, it would probably be the toilet. It's something you completely forget about, but as soon as it's gone or broken, you realize how fundamental to your life it is. NordVPN is like the toilet for your internet browsing experience. Essential, yet forgettable. Click the link below or go to nordvpn.com slash design theory for a huge discount and four months free. Back to the video. Utensils and etiquette exist to make us feel more civilized, but sometimes these objects even have spiritual significance. At this point, we're starting to get into cultures that I'm not really a part of. So I had a lot of help from these people from all over the world 
who educated me on their culinary cultures. So big shout out to all of you. In Japan, chopsticks have ceremonial value. Shintoism is a religion that started in Japan, and they believe that spirits, or kami, inhabit many things, especially trees. Trees are like a bridge to the divine. In order to be closer to that spirit, the Japanese sometimes use bare, unlacquered wood to construct Shinto shrines, as well as create some kinds of ceremonial chopsticks. Hachi, the Japanese word for chopsticks, also means bridge, and it is a Shinto belief Belief that chopsticks are almost like a bridge through life. At 100 days old, a child is fed rice with a ceremonial pair of chopsticks. When a Japanese person dies, they're given a ceremonial offering of rice with chopsticks standing upright in the bowl. At a Japanese funeral, a special pair of chopsticks, usually made of a specific kind of wood or metal, is used to lift bones from the ashes pass from family member to family member, and then the bones are eventually carried to an urn using chopsticks. So a Japanese person's life begins and ends with chopsticks. They're symbols of transition. Even if someone invented a functionally superior utensil and introduced it to Japan, it would probably never replace chopsticks. Or if it did, it would take centuries. Chopsticks and the food that is used to eat them is completely embedded in the culture. As designers, these sorts of conventions are incredibly important to consider, and they're as relevant today as ever. In a culture, there are some things that you just can't argue with, but some people are always going to try, even today. They tried at Google with the product Google Glass. It's impossible to take anyone seriously when they're wearing these things. More importantly, it was impossible to ignore the safety and privacy issues with a camera right in front of your face. It got so bad that people who wore them were called glass holes. Google Glass ignored social conventions, and because of that, it never really took off. It never really had a chance to. Google Glass was doing the equivalent of introducing a fork to Japanese culture. I mean, sure, it might be more functional in some cases, but if it clashes with the conventions, it's not gonna catch on. I do respect Google's team for at least trying this out. At least they had the courage to try something new. There's an assumption in the West that chopsticks are harder to use than forks. In some ways, that is kind of true. Asian cultures that use chopsticks have a higher incidence of osteoarthritis in the hand they use to hold their chopsticks. And it does take a little bit more practice to get good at using them as well. But ease of use really depends on the cuisine and the context. Forks make perfect sense for twirling strands of spaghetti, but try eating rice with a fork and chasing the grains around a small bowl. It's actually pretty awkward. Generally speaking, forks and knives really need a flat surface to eat from and an elevated surface to rest your plate on. Even though forks were around for centuries, they didn't really catch on until the 1800s when shallower plates were introduced. It also takes two hands to use a knife and a fork, but only one hand to use chopsticks. Table setting is a lot simpler with chopsticks. All you need is a bowl and two sticks. You don't really even need a table because you can hold the bowl with your free hand. It's hypothesized that chopsticks were adopted for very practical reasons as well. Chopsticks have been used for thousands of years, but they weren't widely adopted until about 400 AD. Around this time, there was a huge population boom in China, and there simply weren't enough resources to go around. Chefs began to cut their food into smaller pieces so they'd cook faster and save cooking fuel. The smaller chunks of food were easier to grasp with a pair of chopsticks. The famous 20th century Chinese writer Ling Yutang once wrote, the whole culinary art of China depends on the art of mixture. When food items are cut into similar sized pieces and cooked together in a pot or a stir fry, chopsticks are usually the best tool for the job. Chopsticks are also significantly easier to clean than forks. Getting in between those tines can be really tricky. It's no secret that chopsticks force you to eat more slowly as well. If you're just trying to wolf down some food as quickly as possible, the fork is a better tool for the job in most contexts. However, what's interesting is that both forks and chopsticks are designed to make you slow down while eating, and this has major health benefits. There are entire manuals on proper fork and knife etiquette with the goal of slowing down your eating. In regards to chopsticks becoming a conventional item, a lot of it does have to do with culture and Confucian ideals. I haven't even gotten into the culinary cultures of places like Vietnam or Korea, but the bottom line is that chopsticks eliminate the universal taboo of the knife at the table. A knife is just an inherently violent and threatening tool. Holding a knife makes us treat our food as if it's prey to be conquered and eaten. Chopsticks force us to have a more gentle approach. Rather than slashing through 
through your food with a knife and stabbing it with a fork, the chopsticks user respectfully picks up the food and brings it to their mouth. It's about respect for the food you're about to eat and respect for the chef that prepared it for you. That's really the common thread among chopsticks cultures. Just as an aside, one cultural convention among YouTube is to ask you to subscribe. Click that red button below, press the like button while you're at it too. It takes no effort from you and it helps me out a lot but back to the video. So does that mean that chopsticks are better than forks? I mean, maybe, but let's let's keep working through the problem. It's very difficult to break deeply ingrained conventions, but it's not impossible. There was a time when forks were viewed as an innovative piece of technology. The fork was adopted over time because it was useful, and it also served a psychological and cultural need for greater refinement and cleanliness while eating. That's one thing that hasn't really changed. Google Glass is a great case study of how ignoring cultural conventions leads to disaster. Designing for the culture as it is and not for the culture you wish it was is so important. Look at Tesla. In 2020, eight out of 10 electric vehicles sold were Teslas. The reason why they're so successful is because their biggest focus is not about making electric vehicles. Americans don't really care about that. They might say they do, but their purchasing decisions suggest otherwise. Tesla focused on making a crazy fun car that also happens to just be better for the environment. Although, Still not great for the environment, but that's a whole nother video. It's the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. <laughs> that's what it's meant to be. It's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. Mm. Make its maximum fun. This taps into a cultural expectation that many Americans have about their cars. They want fun. Tesla's competitors focused on the electric part, when in fact, they needed to focus on why people buy cars in the first place. We should want to help out the environment, but for better or for worse, designers have to focus on the way people actually think. Whether we're designing a car or the next innovation in utensils, the same rules apply. Once again, culture does change, but it usually takes a really long time. Sometimes these cultural preferences can evolve. In China, there's an emphasis on communal eating. There are several dishes in the middle of the table and each person grabs food to bring onto their plate. Wu Lian De, a Cambridge trained doctor, brought the lazy suit into the Chinese public, calling it the hygienic dining table. It was a way to make it easier to communally eat food while not using your own chopsticks and instead using a serving spoon. This is a great example of how customs can evolve with time. The common eating utensil is a design challenge that we deal with several times a day. We've touched on the fact that ease of use is often about context and perceptions rather than reality. So is there a best utensil? I'm not sure that you can answer this definitively when there's such a strong connection between the food being served, the utensil, and the cultural context, but I do have an opinion on it. First of all, I don't think it's chopsticks or forks. I actually agree with St. Peter Damien. Remember I mentioned him at the beginning of the video? Eating with your hands is the best. I mean, let's be real here. What kinds of foods are finger foods? The best kinds. Sandwiches, fried chicken, pizza, ribs, curries with naan, and of course, probably one of my favorites, the burrito. Edible utensils also rank really high on my list because there's no waste involved in the process. There's a physicality to eating with your hands. You feel more connected to your food. I think that a lot of people might see this as a more primitive form of eating, and it can be, but many cultures that eat with their hands have pretty sophisticated table manners. Like in India, for example, Ayurvedic traditions state that hands are viewed as organs of action. Each finger represents a different element, earth, wind, water, and fire. When you eat with your fingers, it's believed that you're stimulating these elements. The Indian eating custom is heavily informed by religious and philosophical beliefs. Many people in India eat with their fingers, not all of them. Some people say that eating with your hands is unhygienic. That isn't really true as long as you just wash your hands. In fact, there are some hypotheses that suggest eating with your hands might even be good for you because it might let healthy bacteria into your system, aiding in digestion. Today, we don't just eat food from one culture. Even though I grew up in America, we have the perfect food, the burrito. It's a Mexican dish that's estimated to be about 12,000 years old. My good friend and design mentor Rafi and I meet every couple of weeks to discuss design over burritos. Many of the videos that you've watched on this channel started over a burrito discussion with Rafi. Friendly discussions over food is something that people have done since the beginning of time. The tradition connects us to our past and the discussions that we have prepare us for our future. The real value of any culinary experience is the way that it's shared with others. While cultures and conventions do change, it's one thing that will always remain constant. Sharing ideas over a beautifully cooked meal is one of the best parts of our human experience.
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. You can also support me on Patreon and get some really cool special perks. The link is in the description below. Lastly, most of my research was done through these two books. Consider the fork and chopsticks. If you click the link in the description below, you can purchase these books through my affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me out a lot. I hope you learned something and have a great day. Thank you.